Hey guys, Nick with Phone Arena here. You're watching our video overview of Windows Phone Mango. Now, as some of you probably know, there are about 500 or so new features and improvements added to the platform, and we shall now cover some of the more significant ones in the list. At a glance, there doesn't seem to be anything new here. You get the same familiar set of live tiles, and you access the list of applications by sweeping to the side. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that because the navigation is just as fluid as responsive as it has always been. The interface has been kept uh, minimalistic and simple. But here comes something new with Windows Phone Mango. Hold on the back button for a second and you go to multitasking mode. This is a task switcher which gives you a preview window of all your opened applications. And every new Internet Explorer tab gets its own preview window as well. Unfortunately, only up to six tasks can run simultaneously and we don't seem to get a way to close the application from the task switcher. Nevertheless, having some sort of multitasking is better than having no multitasking at all. Another improvement is the way the built-in email client handles your emails. You get threaded emails now, meaning that your conversations get grouped together instead of being treated like separate emails. Something that we also like is that you can set up multiple email accounts and have some or all of them linked together in a unified inbox. Moving along, Twitter integration is another perk that Windows Phone Mango adds, which is why now you get tweets from your friends straight to your people hub. Some other cool things that you can do is you can send a web link straight from the Internet Explorer browser and you can share a picture via Twitter straight from the gallery. However, it is a bit weird that the dedicated uh, Twitter application doesn't come pre-installed and it feels a bit unpolished. It works for the most part, but it wouldn't let us log in. Perhaps it has not been updated for Mango yet. Of course, some people might think that uh, once you have Twitter deeply integrated with Windows Phone Mango, you may not need the dedicated application, but, but we still find it neat uh, using it once in a while just to check what the latest trends are and to see what strangers around you are tweeting about. The next feature that we're going to check out is SkyDrive, which has been integrated into the platform deeper than before. You can view and upload all kinds of documents as well as uh, videos and photos straight from the gallery. However, if you want to do something basic like uh, moving a file or deleting it, you have to fire up the web interface of SkyDrive. Nevertheless, that isn't too big of a problem because the web interface of SkyDrive is powered by HTML5 and Internet Explorer 9, which uh, Windows Phone Mango comes with, uh, supports HTML5 and runs it pretty good. Besides, Internet Explorer now comes with a brand new JavaScript engine and gets hardware acceleration. As a result, surfing the web is a silky smooth experience without a hint of lag. Pinch to zoom works flawlessly and if you prefer you can use double tap to zoom in on paragraphs. The only thing that is missing is Adobe Flash support, but chances of that ever coming to the platform are very small because Microsoft has no plans on adding support for the feature anytime soon. There are also a few changes to the way Bing searches the web in Windows Phone Mango. Besides doing a regular web search, you can now look for nearby places like restaurants, uh, venues or museums. On top of that, Bing now has the ability to scan barcodes and to identify songs just like SoundHound or Shazam can. There is also a way to scan text and translate it into a different language, but the feature is a hit or miss. It works only if the lighting conditions are good enough and the object that you're scanning is well illuminated. Some minor tweaks that we find interesting include the ability to add your own ringtone instead of using the stock ones and to take a photo by tapping on the smartphone's display when you're in the camera interface. You can also use the camera for video chat and you get a Wi-Fi hotspot functionality, but these are features that will be accessible from the newer Windows Phone devices only. Overall, with Mango, Windows Phone has gotten closer to the big boys than it has ever been. The new version of the platform seems like a great improvement over any of its previous releases. The new features add some more life to the platform and make it feel more elegant and more capable of getting stuff done than it was before. 
And at the same time, those who have been using Windows Phone for a while now have far less reasons to switch to iOS or Android, for example. On the other hand, it seems like a great fraction of what Mango brings to Windows Phone is functionality that the competition has already had for a while. The platform feels uh, like an upgrade that adds features Windows Phone should have already had in order to gain enough momentum. Android and iOS are still uh, the indisputable leaders on the smartphone field and it's going to take something more if Microsoft is ever to reach their market share figures. Thank you for watching our video overview of Windows Phone Mango. This was Nick and if you'd like to get some more news from the smartphone world or if you'd like to read some of our smartphone reviews, feel free to go to our website phonearena.com.